Good, good morning, everyone. Hello. How are you guys doing today? I want to say well done to you. You the in in Port Elizabeth, we live in a strange city where people where where, where people act like 15 degrees is below freezing. So. I just want to say well done for being in church, and so nice to have you with us. Now, um, I, I um, decided, I decided to preach something slightly different today. Normally, normally I, 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 I preach on a verse that you, you, you're certain you've never ever read, and you're like, where did he find this in this Bible? Is it really there? And then you look and there, lo and behold, you've read it six times and you've never noticed it because you were half asleep. Is, is there some truth to that? So for instance, I, 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 and some of the stuff I thought about preaching, for instance, do you know that God, there's a law that forbids you from cursing deaf people? Okay, we'll, you'll hear about it in the next few weeks sometime. Or where the devil lives. Also, stay tuned. These things are coming your way. And um, the week after, uh, next week, I'm probably going to be preaching about what the purpose of hell is. And the week after, why baptism and, and circumcision are connected. You guys are all looking stunned. So this, this is what's coming your way. But today I felt like I needed to encourage people. And so I'm, it's, it's different to what I normally do. And um, because I, f- I really feel like there are a lot of people who like, oh, you know, things are piling up. And so I'm really going to give you a personal testimony. And... Um, and I want, so, but I'm going to try and do my best to explain it to you, why it meant so much to me, and then I'm going to explain why hopefully it's going to mean something to you. So, are you, are you, it's a different ride to the one I normally take you on. Are you ready? Okay. So, unfortunately, I have to take you back to this for the testimony sake, for the testimony sake. Lockdown. On the 23rd of March, 2020, our president, bless him and his couch, <laughs> yes, and his couch, um, he, he locked us down. And to be honest, no one had ever, no one, no one alive had ever seen a church that wasn't allowed to meet in South Africa. There were obviously China and Russia, but and so on. The, he did it on the. I went back and looked on the Monday night, and on the Tuesday we had to work out what to do because we had, we couldn't hold church anymore. We weren't allowed out of our houses. What can you do? Incidentally, I mean, that's, that, is, that is just over two years ago, and look how young and beautiful I looked. <laughs> so you can see I've been busy since then, and, and literally, actually, for the first few weeks of lockdown, I got the fittest I had been in years. I ran a, I ran a kilometer in four minutes, 11 seconds. That's how fit I got. Well, what else was I to do? So... But the problem is, is so there we, we didn't know what to do, so we decided the next day to come back and, and record messages, and so that at least, because Easter was coming up, and so we were like, what's going on, that's okay, fortunately we had a bit of a YouTube channel back then, we'd already started it, and so, and, and, and so we... We sort of were worried, what do we do? We set up a, um, we, 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 we pre-recorded a whole bunch of messages. And I did something crazy at that meeting where everybody was in total fear. And I think it was the Holy Spirit. I'm pretty sure it was because it sounds crazy. I said, let's come out bigger out of lockdown than what, what we went in. 
I don't think anyone else in South Africa said anything like that. But I said that. And so, and so, we, and, and so what I want to say to you is that, and I think that this is a really important thing for you to do, because in Genesis 50 verse 20, it's, they say of ja um, jo Joseph says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. And I think that more of us need to go into a trial with, with, the, with the attitude that you're coming back bigger and better. Say, I'm, trial's happening. God is going to use this for good, and I'm going to come out bigger and better on the other side. And I don't mean your waste. I have come out bigger out the other side, waste-wise. But I um, actually went back to CrossFit this, seriously this past week, and I power cleaned 70 kilograms, so I was very pleased with that. No, seriously, do you know what a power clean is? When you pick up the weight from the floor to here. So I lifted 70 kilo. I was very, I, I don't know if you guys cared, but I cared. Anyway, because I need to get fit again. But the bottom line is, is that we need to, you need to not, when something goes wrong, I want to encourage you not to hide, not to cower, but to say, this is coming my way, I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to come out faster the other side. I'm going to go, and, and God can do that for you. God, if you put your faith out, because this is really what I'm going to be telling you about, is you need to put your faith out. So you look at the petrol price, and you go, at the end of this recession, I'm going to have more in my bank account than when it started. At the, you know, whatever it is, God God can use whatever evil is intended for you to turn you around. So we started preaching online. That was, and can you see that at our YouTube channel? I preached, we got, this is, this is two years ago, so there's probably a few views, but there were 92 views in total. So we, had, we went from like a thousand people in church down to 92 views. Dear Lord, where did everyone go? And um, so what we told ourselves is that it was families watching. <laughs> and, and I phoned some other pastors and they were saying the same things to themselves because, you know, you get a whole lot of people in church and then you get no one watching. <laughs> and so, and so, um, and so we started praying, because what else could we do? You know, what else could we do? So, um, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and I'll tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Now, I at the beginning of lockdown, had no presence. I was not on any social media whatsoever. I've now got a, like a hidden profile on one social platform so I can see what our stats are. But I mean, what did I know about, what, what did I know about social media? And, and largely, it was up to me what we do next. And so I, what we would do and one of the things I've learned with social media is if you, do, if you do something now and it works, in six months' time it's not going to work, or even three months' time. So you try a strategy for three months, and it does well for a while, and then it changes. And then you do another strategy, and then it changes again. And so we would have to go back to the Lord all the time and say, what now? What must we do now? Because... What was our goal? To come out bigger and better on the other side. And so, and, and so 
we started, um, it was actually my dad who said we need to, um, between Justin um, Miller and my dad, we, we need to be on the internet. And so we started, we, we started doing um, something every day on the, on the internet. And the reason why is because we, we needed to touch people. Now, I'm hearing about churches that are still not fully going again, and that's fine, but Word of Faith is not that sort of church. Oh, yes, thank you, Cindy. We, we just, we, we're not the back down sort of church, and I don't want to criticize those churches. The Lord has given each church its own culture and, and what He's doing, but we're not that. And so we were out there, and the reason why I picked these is, is you can see, I think the one on the left is early lockdown. You see one of nine views, then it was middle lockdown, and then you can see an end of lockdown. You can see by the hair. Okay. Let's go back to the previous slide. You can see early lockdown. Can you see that? Yeah? End of lockdown. Can you see the hair? Yes. You can see the... And it, that, was, that was about two days before they reopened barbers and hairdressers. So I needed a haircut. Anyway, the bottom line is, is can you see how... The, and that one, that one is just... That particular message, and it breaks up a bit, has just carried on growing. So what the Lord started to teach us is how to reach out to the world through social media. And so things have really grown. I mean, we started with 18,000 followers on maybe even 17,000 followers on Facebook. We now got 28,000 followers. And we, had two, we started with just over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube at the beginning of lockdown. But, and, and so the Lord really blessed our ministry. In fact, Richard Gray prophesied that we were going to be used to broadcast into China, communist China. If anyone thinks that communist China doesn't need Jesus, just re watch the news. <laughs> you know? It's actually quite alarming. 93% of all microchips are made in Taiwan. So if they blow the place up, no one gets a computer or a car I think even the toasters have microchips now. So we need to pray peace over that place. So, and, and so, but we, we pushed hard. We were on there all the time. We, we did all kinds, we changed our strategy. We did all kinds of things. But as you can see, as people came to, this is, this is a picture of our subscribers as you can see, from January, our YouTube channel went much quieter. And um, why? Because people were back in church. And I want to, um, and let me be clear that nothing I'm saying here um, suggests that you shouldn't, that, that I don't want you in church. I want you live because I feel there's an anointing in the building. But if not, I'm so glad that you're online and I want to welcome you online. So things started to fall off, and, and so I was saying, we'd say where, we, where things had been flying, we'd been growing, it became much quieter. And so, and so, and the church filled up, especially our 10 o'clock service has been, really been filling up. Um, so why do we have an 8 and 10 o'clock service? Because in Acts, the Lord added 3,000 people in one day. We're trusting the Lord for 3,000 people, or we're trusting the Lord for a lot of people. If we only have one service, we'll have nowhere to put all those people. So our goal is to grow. So can I ask you 8 o'clock service guys to please sit a little bit forward? No hiding under the gallery. In fact, we had to put the blinds up to stop you guys all... So we'd have a shot of the service, and there's like no empty benches, and you're all in the shadows. Come, come sit a bit forward, please, guys. 
for, for my sake, you know, I want to thank you, for the Petersons. Yes, Karen, one more bench. <laughs> you know that's where you're meant to be. <laughs> I laugh at Karen. Um, she, she prayed for years for her family, and then her family arrived, and they wanted to sit right in the front. She's like, and each week I see her grimacing as she says, this is what I prayed for, this is what I prayed for, this is, as she walks to the front. Anyway, bottom line is, is that things started to fall off. And I think that I preached one of my best messages ever, the way to the top of the mountain. And no one, we got 213 views. It's, we haven't had so, so few views since lockdown, before lockdown. Remember, that's the one where James played the shofar, and I thought that was one of my best messages ever. No one cared, or very few people cared. And so I, 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 so I looked, because we, we, we drive growth, and we, you know, we, we, we've got a goal to win the world for Jesus, and so we look at numbers, say, why do you care about numbers? Well, let me ask you, how did the good shepherd know that one of his 100 sheep was missing? Because he counted. The good shepherd counts. I'd like to count you much better. Miss Church, hi, where have you been? I, I, really? We, I, need, I want you to serve the Lord. I want you to grow. I want to see your life changed. Not preaching here for my own edification or my own glory. Preaching here because I want you to grow. We, I mean, if, who here has, has looked at the, the outlines and the effort we put into the outlines? I'm not there when you run the outline. Not for my glory. Besides, I'm just the typist. The typist that Jesus loves. That's why I can blame Pastor Frederick for all the wrong scriptures, because occasionally we put the wrong, <laughs> like, like on, on Wednesday, I ran, because I ran it, we run it twice before we send it out, just to see if it works. So, so the first, so on Wednesday night, um, I was running it, and the one verse was completely wrong. And the guy read it, and I was like, I went and checked, is, is he reading the right verse? And I was like, okay, it's our mistake. So at the end of the verse, I, went, I shook my head and said, yeah, no, that's, that's really true. <laughs> Either I or Pastor Frederick had put the, yeah, I typed it wrong or he told me wrong or who knows. But the bottom line is I want you to grow, and that's why we preach. And the Lord has got a plan for word of faith. We're supposed to be touching communist China. You know? YouTube channel is dying. So, dropping off, it's, it's, and so what I did is I said to the Lord, and I looked, because we had been driving for 10,000 subscribers, because that was our goal, get to 10,000, let's work to 10,000, let's break through to 10,000, YouTube will give us more air, more people will see, it'll grow, you know, and then I went and I looked at our sub subscriber growth, and I, and I thought, and I worked out that roughly January or February we'd get to 10,000 after this message. And I said to the Lord, I'd really like to get to 10,000 this year. 10,000 subscribers. I'd also really like to, to fill the church. So next Sunday, bring your friends. We're praying for them. We're going to fill up our church and we're going to grow our channel. And so... Now, in, in Ephesians 3, verse 20, it says, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his, minis, his mighty power to work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And so, I, I, I didn't even say the words to the Lord. I just, you know, in my head, I sent up like a thought to the Lord. I'd really like to make 10,000 before the end of the year. This was at the end of June. 
And so, and, and so I left it at that. Didn't really pray again. I, I also asked, Lord, what should I, because what should I do? What should we do about our social media? Each time before through lockdown, the Lord had given me new, new plans. This time, nothing. He was absolutely silent. It's like, oh, well, okay. Got on with my life. And then just after that, we had, there was a guy called Amir Safati. I have a confession, and I confessed it to him. When they asked me whether he could come and preach at our church, I said, who is that? <laughs> I'd never heard of the man before in my life. So then they said, you must go look on his, on his Telegram channel. So I asked Pastor Dorothy. She was the one who asked me. I said, is he solid? I, I told Amir all of this, so you can, and she said, yes, he's very solid, he preaches on the end times, we said, well, let's go for it, Word of Faith is a, sort of a, a go for it church, you know, so we said, great, then I went and looked on his Telegram channel, turns out he had, at about that stage, about 260,000 followers on his Telegram channel, very interesting news, he posts there all the time, and so I'd said to them, he can come for free. Normally we, we charge a rental, but I just felt, I said, but if, if possible, can he post our channel on his, on his Telegram channel? But I didn't know whether he was going to do it or not. A lot of guys are very careful about their channel, they protect their channel. But lo and behold, right at the end of June, he posts this. Who of you recognize that? That was our corner board. Instantly, we get 20 new subscribers within two hours of that being posted. The only way they could have got on is if they had gone onto the picture and enlarged and enlarged to see where it was. It doesn't, if you go right in, it says Word of Faith Essay, YouTube. But basically, in the picture, do you see the picture that you can't see? Yeah, they must have enlarged it. So I thought, wow, that's amazing. Well, what happens if he actually posts a service? And he did. And you know what happened? Now, when he did that, let me just actually go back. I, I, and, then, and then I heard he was definitely going to do it. He posted another thing. And I thought, Lord... I'm going to believe you for 500 people, 500 new subscribers. And then I thought, no. And then, you know, when you, when you say something and it just seems crazy and you're almost like, as the, word, as the words go out, you want to pull it back? I said, Lord, maybe a thousand? <laughs> <laughs> and I... To me, that seemed inconceivable. And in the end, and then, and then once we got to 10,000 tests and Cindy got behind the channel, and we added 1,200 subscribers. Wow. In about three weeks. And, and that was just the Lord answering my fairly faithless prayer. Just sort of threw it out there. I wasn't like, Lord, I'm asking you for it. I was like, can I? How about it? I have 500 and then it was almost more than I could dare believe. A thousand? And the Lord did way more than I... And where in June, at the end of June, we, or beginning of July, we had 1,000, 9,100 subscribers. We've now got 10,287. And the Lord has blessed us. 
so, there's so much activity. And so, something that we had worked so hard on seemed to be dying. And just a little silent prayer was all the excuse that God needed to intervene. Now, a lot of you like, oh, that's great, but actually, who cares? Honestly, let's be, let's be honest. But I want to tell you that God wants to do big things for you too. He wants to, and so I'm going to give you a few quick principles of why, because I've found that often my greatest answers to prayer are those silent almost wish prayers, and then the Lord will suddenly step in and do something amazing. I'm going to tell, give you a few quick principles about why I think it happens. So the first principle, or the first scripture is 1 John 5, verse um, 14 to 15, and it says, we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. And so I think, I think that the Lord, this was God's plan for our church, to fill our services, to fill um, churches in, in Galvindale and, and Blumendal and, 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 and Five Ways and and uh, Boyson's Park and every other church that we're involved in. Incidentally, guys, you need to be at PowerPoint tonight because I'm going to have so many more people from out of town here than in town if you don't, guys don't pitch because so many people are becoming part of our connect group system. It's remarkable. But the point is, is that God... I asked in terms of God's will. Say, well, yeah, but what about my finances? Well, one of the things that one of the things that God wants to do is get you out of debt. That's his will. I can say with a hundred percent certainty that God's plan does plan or God's will is for you to be out of debt. So, I can also say for certain that he wants to bless you. He wants to care for you. He wants to repair your family. These are all things that I can say 100% certain that are, they're in, within God's will. Another principle is this one. Say, um, Proverbs 3, verse um, 4 to 6, if you want favor with both God and men and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely. Don't ever trust, your, in your, ever trust yourself. In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. So I think that why the Lord answered so powerfully is because I trusted him. So many people, so many people pray and then go off and try and control the result themselves. So, and, and I believe in intercessory prayer, but if you keep praying the same thing, often it's an, again and again, it's often an indication of unbelief, of you wanting to control. So, I, like we've prayed repeatedly for that. That's for the, the names. I believe, so I want you to understand, but if you, you need to be careful that it's, it's not about control. Because the opposite of control is trust. You need to trust the Lord. One of the good things about this is I had no control whatsoever. Literally, I had to throw my, you know, step out on the water and let the Lord do it. And I think... I think the less we try and control things, the more we trust God, the more space he has to answer our prayers. And then this is very, so on that point, Philippians 4 verse 
6 to 7, don't worry about anything. And this, is, and, and this is something that we make a mistake about. We pray about stuff and then we worry, worry, worry. And if you trust the Lord, you shouldn't be worrying, worrying, worrying. I, th- I think it's because I threw out the prayer and sort of carried on that God has the space because what happens is, is as we worry, we crowd him out of the situation. And then he can't intervene. He can't do anything. He can't change things. So tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So the key is to walk in God's peace. So pray and you need to walk in God's peace. You literally need to give your anxieties to him. And the last point that I want to make is in James 4 verse 2. You long for what others have and you can't afford it, so you start a fight to take it away from them. And And this is very important. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And this is the thing, is if there's one thing I can speak to you about, encourage you, if there's one thing I can hopefully get, hopefully get across to you, is that you need to trust the Lord. You need to stop trying to control everything. You need to hand it over to the Lord. You need to go stop fighting other people for it. You need to speak to the Lord first. So you see, look around, oh, that's, this person's got this and that. Don't worry about other people. It's you and the Lord. He's got a plan for you, the things he wants to give you and do in your life. Don't, don't work out what God's plan is for you by looking at other people. What has God got for you? Because he's got a great plan for you. But you need to stop controlling. You need to release and you need to trust the Lord. And so that brings us to communion. Because there's nothing you can do to get your own salvation. I'm going to jump. Let's see how this goes. Can we move this off? There we go. Okay. There we go. Online, if you don't have grape juice or or whatever, I I, I was doing communion with with um, a piece of bread and water right through lockdown. I'm going to pray for this stuff, and then we're going to hand it out. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we release these emblems to your children, I pray, Father God, that they will get the revelation that they must not control. They need to trust. Help them to walk in your strength. Let's take the ushers, if we can go ahead. You're very impressive. And we want to thank the ladies. Um, hmm? um, if you can come and get your implements, um, especially here, uh, um, if you could come forward and get, or let's maybe maybe go up the aisle a bit. Um, yeah, if you could come forward. We still post COVID. We're working out how to do of the stuff, but we're going to take communion now. Upstairs, there should be stuff up there, is there? Um, yeah, it seems it's coming that side. Um, have we got, okay, there we go. So upstairs, don't worry, you don't have to climb the stairs, although it is good for you to climb stairs. <laughs> Let's get communion. (laughs) 
Let's sing while we, everyone gets, you've got time to run to the kitchen to get water if you're online. You sustain in the middle of it all, you remain the same. got um, communion? Is there anyone here who doesn't have? So, what this represents, yeah, let's get the praise and worship team on board. What, what this represents is the end of our effort and the beginning of God's effort. So there's nothing that you can do that brings salvation. There's nothing that you can do that that can sustain you. Um, There was a friend of mine who asked and said, if you serve the Lord, do you just have to suffer? And I said, no. The Lord, the, the, the Spirit will live inside of you. He will sustain you. And so as we take this, what we're realizing is the broken body of Jesus on the cross comes to set us free and sustain us. And so there are battles, there are struggles, there are things that you worried about, that you're fighting with, that you, and this tells us that by yourself you're not going to succeed. It's the Lord. And so let's take, let's take this together And we thank the Lord that he sustains us. And then we've got the the juice that represents the blood that Jesus shed for you. That your past, your present, and your future sins are forgiven. That you're acceptable before the Father and you can enter his throne room and you can send up even silly silent prayers to him and he'll hear you. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. So let's take it together. And so what I want to what I want to what I want you to take out of this is that you need to just trust the Lord. Breathe out, going to trust you, Jesus. He's going to sustain you. He's going to, if you don't know what to do next, ask him. He wants to speak to you. He wants to lead you. If you don't know what's coming in your life, ask the Lord. He wants to help you. So I'm going to pray for, I'm going to pray for people and I'm not going to ask you to come out. I'm just going to ask you if, you, if you realize during this message that you've been relying on your own strength more than you should, 
I just want you, as, as I pray, I want you to lift your hands because I think it's so important for us to signal, for us to signal that God is in control and that we are handing over, we are handing over control to Him. So let's lift our hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of trying to do stuff in our own. We repent of, of trying to solve our own problems. We repent, Father, and we ask you, Father God, to help us to only trust you. Help us to put our faith in you. Help us to, help, help us to look after you, that, that you allow you to look after us. We ask you to sustain us. We ask you to guide us. We put our faith and our trust in you and we give our worries to you today. I want you, if you're online or here, just go take your worries and, and hand them over to Jesus. Just hand them over. Trust the Lord. Hand them over. He's going to solve them for you. He's going to sustain you. He loves you like a father. He loves you with such deep care. Just hand your worries over to Jesus. There are things that you can't solve. Hand them over to Him, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. While we're in that attitude of prayer, we're going to pray. There's so many friends and loved ones. We, we're trusting for them to come next week. Incidentally, if you want invites, please to, to um, invite people to church next Sunday. Please come and get fetch some. We need to get it. We need to invite as many people as possible. But let's pray. So let's be honest. For a lot of us, our heart is in this box. People we really care about. And so let's hand them over to the Lord to bring them. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with these people. We lay hands on their names. And Father, we love them. We care about them so much. We thank you, Father God, that you want to save them. And so we we ask you this week to work in them we ask you to, that your holy spirit will start, will speak to them that they can't ignore father god i pray lord that they will be open to i pray father god that they will be open to the invites that you will bring them here that you will touch them that you will do a mighty work in them i ask you father god to supernaturally do, do something special in their lives. We bless you, Lord. We ask you to do something wonderful here next Sunday. I pray for that, Lord. And Father, we pray for our streets. And we pray, Father God, that you will bring the peace of God upon our city. We speak the peace of God. We open our city's doors, its gates, to the presence of the Lord. I pray, Father God, that we will, that these gates will open, that you will touch them, that you will touch our city, that you will install, uh, that you will move people in our city to serve you, follow you, and, 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 and give you authority. I pray, Lord, that you will be the ruler in our city, that, that, that the systems of this world will become subject to you, Father. We pray, Father God, for workers. Lord, we ask you to bring lots and lots of workers into our congregation. That we can open more and more connect groups. That the love of Jesus can be touched. Can touch person after person, Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you love us. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your mighty, mighty, mighty work. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, we put our anxieties in your hands, our fears, and we ask you to 
work in our lives and do more than you could ever, we could ever ask or think. We trust you to do that, Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming. Bless you guys. Bring your friends next week. The invites, please come and get invites now. If you're wanting to invite people, I want to encourage you and see you at PowerPoint tonight at 5 o'clock.